Now we know how to add content to a pages document. Let's take a look at modifying some of that content. The first thing that I want to show you is once you've added any object, and remember object in pages is any of the tables, charts, text boxes, shapes, lines, images, or videos that you've added. To delete one, all you need to do is highlight the object once, so that means tap on that object once, and you'll see that you can delete it from the page. So I'm going to delete the extra objects that I've put in, except for my table. We're going to start with the table. One thing to note is when you put in a table, it is not going to have the full functionality as it would if you're using numbers and you're looking for functions within cells. This is not a full-on Excel or numbers table. This is a basic table for information. If you need a table that does the functions that the cells need, then you would want to go to either numbers, um, Excel, or Sheets within Google. So. If I have my table highlighted, you'll see that the border is around the entire thing. I have my dots, and if I need to do anything at all to the entire table, I can simply highlight the table, cut, copy, paste, or delete as needed. The other thing you can do to a table is you'll see that on either side, the columns and the rows, you have two lines. This is how you will add columns or rows to your table within the pages document. So I can add or subtract there and I can add or subtract when it comes to my rows. So that's a really quick and efficient way to do that. The other thing is if you double tap in any of the cell boxes, you'll be able to type in information. If you would like to type in um, a word, I could just say test right here. And let's say that I want that to be centered in the box because even though I'm just putting it in, I want it to look professional, I want it to look good. My students are working on this, they want it to look professional and uh, they know who their audience is. So if you do that, once that cell is highlighted and you go to your formatting paintbrush, you'll see all the further options I have. The first one is for every piece of the table. Now this would apply to the entire table. This is not just the cell I'm in, this is the entire table. So if I wanted to add a table name, I could turn that on. I could make an outline if I wanted to, and this would actually outline the cells that I have on my table in the, in the document. I could make uh, alternating rows on or off, depending on what I want to do. My grid options, so I can show the different lines, all the different grid options for the lines. I also have the font for the table, so you'll see I have that in there, and if I change this to Arial Rounded, it changed it change the font and again that is going to apply to the entire table and then I can change the table font size again these are the full table options now if I just want to work with that cell I would choose cell and you'll see that I can change the formatting of the text within that cell only I can resize it I can change the text color I can go down and see where it is. Now this is where I would actually set up the spacing within that cell. So if I want it to be centered, I would choose center and then middle. Below that is wrap text in cell and this is going to allow the text to move to the next line and the cell will grow with the text. If you have that turned off, it's going to do what Excel does by default, which is you could type 30 sentences, but you're only going to see maybe the first 5 to 10 words because it does not wrap the text within that box. So this will keep that wrapped. I can change the color of the fill within that box. So I could make it uh, this, this blue color. Um, and I can also change the border style. So you'll see that I can do an outline in the middle outline and center, I can really change how this cell looks um, individually. So I can do that for each and every cell. Format is next, and although it will not handle the functions of Excel or numbers or sheets, it will handle different types. So I can choose different formats for uh, the cell if I would want to. So if I choose the next cell over and I chose a date and time format, then it is going to handle it in a date and time format when I put in the information. That's something that you can explore if you'd like or have your students explore. If I go back to my formatting, last one is a range which we've looked at and remember this applies to the table and how it interacts with the text that is around it. If you need to, you can also grab an individual cell and move it anywhere on the table. So if I tap once in the cell, so that cell is highlighted, and then when I push again I hold down, you'll see that it stands off the page. I can move this cell to any one of the other cells available. 
and when I remove and when I let go it will drop it into that portion of the table the other thing that you that you will note is that you can highlight the entire row or the entire column and you can delete you can cut you can copy you can insert there you can resize it based on those two lines so you could resize each and every cell or row or column if you need to let's say you needed to merge cells I'm going to single click in the cell that says test and I'm going to grab the blue dot and then move it out so that I have all four of those together you'll see that right now I can merge those and I've created one larger cell let's say that you do that and you realize you do not want that there you can always undo in the upper left or if you click the box one time click that cell you can unmerge and it will put put them back to the standard format that you had them in so those ba that's basic formatting and modifying of a table so let's go ahead and add a chart now you can add a standard 2d chart a 3d chart or an interactive I'm going to choose an interactive chart so you can see how that works when you design it but the 2d and 3d will also function very similarly so if I put in a standard interactive chart and I move it just down here I'm gonna resize it at this point if I go up to my paintbrush you'll see that I have chart options so I can give the chart a title legend the interactive chart type with the buttons and sliders I can change the font anything that is going to be about this entire object about the entire chart will be there I can change the y-axis and x-axis information I can put a name there I can put the label angle I can also add my arrange feature so how it interacts with the text where it is is it front to back all those different things so what you noticed is that there was no place in the paintbrush formatting options for data so what I would do is when I highlight the chart you will see that you can edit your data points it will flip around and then it is going to give you the option to insert and edit the information there is a gear in the upper left hand corner that will allow you to plot either as a row or as a as a column so depending on which way you want it to go with an interactive chart this is going to be very important so I changed it to plot column as series I'm going to choose done and now you'll see that it plotted region 1 and 2 and the months became the data points if I go back in and I change it back to what it was originally where the rows are the series and I choose done you'll now see that it is plotting each month with the region as the data points so those are your basics for modifying a chart within a pages document and again at any time if you need to change an objects formatting you would highlight the object by clicking once going to the paintbrush and then choosing the appropriate box for that object